I lied to you in the title of this video because I didn't make a multiplayer FPS in seven days. I made it in five. Well, actually four, because the first day was spent figuring out the most ridiculous bug of all time. So let me start at the very beginning. So a couple weeks ago, I received a DM from a little known YouTuber known as Blackthorn Prod inviting me to a challenge against six other game developers to make the best momentum game to win $5,000. In the first week of this challenge, we had seven days and the two worst games would be eliminated. Now, I haven't played a lot of momentum games outside of FPSs and after briefly considering making a 2D Altos adventure clone and realizing that I most likely would not make a good game this way, I settled on my very specialty, making a multiplayer FPS. But there was one slight problem. See, I had two different uni assignments due both Monday and Tuesday, which were the first two days of this challenge. Yeah, I had five days left. So the very first thing that any FPS needs is a player. Specifically, if you want an actual character instead of a bean, you are going to need a mix of walk, run, and jump animations for the lower body, and something called inverse kinematics for the upper body, which is basically like an animation that you can control with code. So our player can do stuff like look up and down, depending on your precise mouse input, and the hands can respond to recoil or different positions of grips on different guns. Now to really win over the judges, my plan was to make the character a literal ape instead of a bean. So unfortunately, this meant a lot more work for me. I've already done something pretty similar to this before with my own proprietary solution, but it was a bunch of spaghetti code and I wanted to build a solid foundation to quickly add features in later rounds. So I settled on using an animation framework that comes with these animations and code already pre-set up and all I needed to do was to replace this abomination of a character with a gorilla. And oh boy, was this a mistake. See, to replace this with a gorilla, I had essentially two paths. But first, let me quickly explain something so you understand. So the way developers animate 3D characters in games is with something called bones. Basically, you create bones to mimic a human skeleton for every part of the character that you want to move, like arms, the head, etc. And then using those bones, you can move them to make cool animations that the game engine somehow applies using some cool wizardry that I don't really understand. Now to replace this robot with a gorilla, which is animated by moving the robot's bones, I basically had two options. Number one was I could try to fit the gorilla into the bones and animations of the robot, so I could reuse the pre-made animations that came with this pack and reap all the benefits. Or two, I could use the bones of the gorilla, but have to delete and remake all of the pre-made animations that came with the pack. Now, although I'm extremely bad at 3D modeling and have very little experience rigging, I'm even worse at making 3D animations. So I chose the first option. Now I spent one and a half days trying to get this rig working with this gorilla, but these hairs just kept crashing my computer when I tried to rig them, or I would somehow create bugs that I've never seen before in my life. And I realized that if I was to have even any shot at making it past the first round, I would have to cut my losses here because I knew that if two days had passed and I'd made this little progress, there was no way I was finishing a multiplayer FPS in time. And remember, $5,000 was on the line. So to make my life easier, I found a model that was closer in proportions to a human, as opposed to an orangutan. And so I settled on a ninja, because this game was essentially going to revolve around parkour and chaining different movement mechanics together. The first thing I did was align all the ninja's limbs as closely as I could to the bones of the robot, and after about one hour, I had something sort of working, which was so promising at this stage. However, I still had these really weird artifacts, which probably could be ignored if it wasn't for the fact that they were really obvious in first person. So after about another three hours of not knowing what the fuck I was doing and watching Blender tutorials and pressing random stuff and testing, I eventually got this to work pretty well. Alright, so after four days, I was finally getting somewhere, but I still had to implement the most crucial aspect of this entire challenge. The theme that this entire game is supposed to hinge on, or else we will literally lose. Momentum. 
yeah, I put that aside. So next, I worked on the multiplayer. And you know, multiplayer in FPS games usually takes days and an entire team of people. But what these people don't realize is that you can just click the add multiplayer button and it writes all the code for you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Next, I finally got to the movement. Now, in this first round, I was only doing the bare essentials to fit into the theme of momentum. So I put together this custom movement controller. It has a dash, similar to Valorant, momentum, a slide, and a grapple hook ability, similar to one of my favorite games, Red Match 2. I knocked out a UI, which was copied, I mean, inspired by a game my friend made and then abandoned. I added UI Sway, which changes with speed and jumping, similar to Titanfall. And then on the second last day, I pretty much went into crunch mode. I programmed the game loop with health and respawning, a bullet hit system that makes different visual effects depending on the surface you shoot. I added unique shoot sounds to each gun, added a muzzle flash to each gun, added a map, faked the lighting, added footsteps that change based on what you're walking on, fixed all kinds of bugs. Fair enough. Added a movement tutorial, which is literally just a slideshow of videos that you click through, and stole the death cam from my multiplayer FPS paint warfare. Cheeky plug, but no, this actually adds a lot because it sort of prevents campers because you can see where you were shot from. Now, on the final day, uh, on the final day, I woke up and realized that over all this time, I haven't tested anything with more than myself. And in literally five hours, the judges were going to play my game. But before I could even do anything, I had to scramble to edit the one minute devlog that we were required to submit each week. And then finally with that done, I built out a beta for my community to test with me before I submitted. And surprisingly, it went pretty flawlessly, aside from some bugs like being able to literally delete your gun by pressing F or the players just being super hard to see. Both are pretty easy fixes and I literally barely got everything done in time. Now the judges would need like 10 hours to all meet and judge, so I took the rest of the day off because I would need to wake up at 3 a.m. the next day to see if all my efforts had paid off and I would at least make it through the first round. And judging by the length of this video and I guess how close you are to the end of it, I proceeded to get brutally eliminated. Each of you have made a really impressive prototype in one week, a multiplayer game in one week. That's incredible. As a solo developer, it's insane. Also, the theme momentum is not really integrated a lot uh, into the game. It's a multiplayer game, which I think has much more potential to be fun. It can be really good. If that multiplayer game gets better, it could be a real banger. Subscribe for more devlogs. Peace.